What's going on you guys and welcome back to the ARA show. Man, it feels like every time I make a video this year, the stock market just keeps getting worse and worse. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 over the past year to date and see how that did. So year to date started January 3rd, we are down 12%, which is horrific. I mean, we basically gave up pretty much half the gains that we had got in 2021 and we all know 2021 was magnificent. I mean, dang, we went from 394 all the way to about 477 and the last time we were at 420 nice which is the level we are today was all the way back in june of 2021 so we definitely have lost so much of the gains that we got in 2021 and it feels like there really isn't a place to put your money in the stock market it feels like no matter where you go you lose money the s p 500 has just been completely selling off 12 percent is huge and a lot of investors, including myself, are waiting for that bounce back, but it feels like we're getting negative catalyst after negative catalyst. So to many, it really does feel like, where should I put my money? And I mean, it's not like it's just the S&P 500 selling off. We got the small caps selling off even worse. We got cryptocurrency selling off starting this year off. And it really just feels like, where should I put my money? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys or talking about some places that are good cash parks, or at least some places to invest your money. Of course, no guarantees, not a financial advisor or anything like that. Just got to get that out of the way. But these are honestly places that I do think that will make you money in the long term. And even though the short term, it might hurt, this will definitely help. So if you guys want to see all that, stay tuned. And you guys already know what comes next. Cue that intro. Well, let's start this video off by my least favorite way to hedge against the current downturn in the stock market and like i said before this is my least favorite way and this is probably something that i won't ever do and that is to actually hold cash and everyone knows for the most part the saying cash is trash and the reason for that is because of inflation and even over the past year we are at 7.9 percent inflation which is the highest since 1982 which is just absolutely nuts but let's take a look at this inflation calculator. So in 2020, if we bought an item for $100, and in this year, 2022, that item would be about $110, which is 9.6% current rate of inflation. So you're basically losing almost 10% of your purchasing power. So again, something that you bought for $100 back then is now about $110 to date in terms of purchasing power. So already you're almost down 10% which actually unfortunately is better than if you had invested into the S&P 500 earlier this year. So of course, no nobody can really time that or really know that that is going to happen, but if you are worried about all the negative catalysts that are going on in the stock market to date, I mean, holding cash is not necessarily the best idea in my opinion at least, but also it's not the worst idea just because if you are scared and you think that this is going to continue even worse and then you plan on buying back later in the future when you feel a little bit more certain about the stock market then that's totally fine cash can be a hedge against bad downturn market conditions so with that being said this is one method again this is not my recommended method this is not my favorite method in fact this is my least favorite method that i probably won't ever do maybe to a certain extent i'll scale back on my investments as the market continues to go down and then load up when i think the market has reached the bottom which is very risky because let's be honest nobody can really time the market and if you do it's I'll, I'll say it's complete luck and either that or you're pretty skilled but either way it's really hard to do and if everyone knew how to time the market then everybody would be rich so that's just one way to put it in my opinion yeah this is one way to hedge against the market downturn let's take a look at another way that you can do so this next method is kind of a unique method that I, I don't want to say I came up with it, but it's one that I started using that I don't really see many other people use. And that's to buy high dividend yield companies that also have low volatility. And these are mostly ETFs. For example, we got QILD over here. We also got JEPI and NUSI. So JEPI and NUSI and QILD, those are basically the most notable in my opinion at the very least. So what these ETFs basically do is they are covered call ETFs. So they have a high dividend for example qild has 11.8 percent dividend yield which is absolutely nuts but at the same time it's not that very volatile so if we take a look at the one-year chart we can see that yeah we're, we're down 
a little bit from twenty two and a half dollars to nineteen and a half dollars. Of course, this is from the recent sell off and year to date. We are down about 11 percent, which is less than the S&P 500. But at the same time, it's it's still getting that 11.8% dividend yield. So in terms of that, it's a little bit better. I mean, if we go to the max chart, we'll, we'll just take a look. It doesn't really go up that much. It doesn't really go down that much. And it's going to be the same thing for some of the other ones. So let's take a look at Jeppy. So Jeppy, on the other hand, unlike QILD, has a lower dividend yield. But this one has actually gone up over time compared to QILD. So either way, it's really about holding value into these companies that are holding value with the money that you own and at the same time you're getting this nice little premium this is seven and a half percent qild was eleven and a half percent but at the same time i mean look at the five-year chart we're going up over time it doesn't really go up so much doesn't really go down so much so that's why this is so great for holding value for my personal strategy i like to use this as an emergency fund where basically i don't want my money to lose value but at the same time kind of get some income on the side i like this better than a savings account and here's just to kind of show you guys i did recently sell out so just to be transparent with you guys and the reason for that is i have a major expense coming up and i talked about this in my previous videos so i kind of need that money for something and that's why it's an emergency fund for me personally but anyways i just kind of want to show you guys the dividends that i'm getting over time so i own jepi and qild so of course it kind of gets exponential as you reinvest your dividends and invest more and more over time so my first dividend from jeppy was five dollars and as you guys can see it kind of grows over time with six dollars seven seven again and then nine dollars and then of course this is when i kind of sold out same thing with qild nine dollars ten dollars twelve dollars and then it went to thirty dollars which was a huge bounce not really sure why that happened of course these dividends are guaranteed but at the same time it's not going to be the same every single month and also as you invest more and more it's going to increase over time but anyways this is one strategy that i found pretty impactful really it's really simple to do all you got to do is buy these stocks or etfs and then just reinvest the dividends it's no different from basically dividend investing all you got to do is buy them hold them reinvest over time pretty simple to do very easy to do and then eventually if you think that personally the stock market in the long term is going to bounce back then when you think the time is right maybe you want to sell out of these etfs and then with all the value you were able to retain buy back into some of the companies that you love for example if you want to sell out of these when you think the market is going to bounce up and then buy tesla at 790 that's where it's at today then boom there's your opportunity right there and of course this is my personal opinion so of course who really knows what's going to happen but anyways let's get on to the next one the last method that i'm going to be talking about is my favorite strategy of all time it's so easy to do and that's why i love it i'm lazy as hell and when it comes to this strategy you can be lazy as hell and it's still fun at the same time and that's none other than dollar cost averaging especially in dividend growth companies so all i'm really doing is i have a bunch of companies that i picked up when i first started this account back in 2020 those companies i haven't done anything to them except bought them every single week so i start off started off with 50 dollars every single week and then i bumped it up to 100 and now i'm doing 150 dollars every single week now all i'm doing is buying these same companies over and over and over and over and over again and then every time i get a dividend i just reinvest it and that's all i do and i've been doing this when the s p 500 last year went up 30 percent and i'm going to be doing this even if the s p 500 goes down 30 percent and the reason why it's so good is because in the long term for the most part and it's been proven through history the stock market goes up over time even in the short term when you basically feel like the stock market is going to go to zero or feel like you're throwing money into the fire pit and it just feels like you're burning every single dollar that you have this is a huge investment and then in the long term it's all going to pay off so let's take a look at what i mean by that so i've been buying some of these companies over and over again pretty much since the inception of this portfolio um and for the most part i'm out, i'm up I've been doing this since 2020. I'm up 12%. Of course, this portfolio at one point was up 50%, which was a good time. Of course, I remember that. But in my head, and as a dividend growth investor, my psychology is I'm getting a better bang for my buck. My yield on cost is way better than it was as if the stock market were to just continuously rise and then dip over time. <clears throat> I love these dips as a dividend growth investor, and that's what I'm here for. I mean, if I, for example, we're going to go inside my tech portfolio and we're looking at Visa, man, 
Visa is down. I'm actually losing money. But every time I buy Visa at $196, and of course my average share price is $212, I'm getting better bang for buck. I'm getting more and more shares. I'm getting more and more value in my shares. And my goal right now is to build my shares and then that in turn will build my portfolio and then build my overall wealth over time when this eventually bounces back. I like dividend growth investing because we're picking strong companies that are paying out these dividends. You know what I mean? So in terms of that, it's so much better. I'm also getting a 0.7% dividend yield right now. If this goes to $212, it's not going to be a 0.7% dividend yield. It's going to be like 0.6. And I'm just making these numbers up off the top of my head. I can't really do math like that. But basically, the point stands that I'm getting a higher dividend yield right now, which is basically essentially the meaning of yield on cost. So, of course, right now, it looks like I'm losing money. I'm throwing money away, but I'm actually building my wealth and my position inside of this stock over time. This has happened to a few of my uh, positions initially. I mean, let's take a look at one of them. So we're going to be looking at Abvi, and this is my first example that I saw firsthand that actually influenced me to that dollar cost averaging is amazing. So at first, Abvi sucked. I mean, when I first bought into it, it was a little bit under $20, and basically around this time, I was losing so much. And then I kind of thought to myself, man, should I just sell out of Abvi? This really sucks to watch. And around then, Abby was sitting around $100. It went down to $90. And then I just kept buying heavier and heavier and heavier. And now Abby's sitting at $150. Meanwhile, my average price is $104. I bought so much into Abby while I was down that now I'm just sitting at a pretty, pretty, pretty 97% return. Of course, this is a weighted, weighted return, so it's not it's not gonna be I went from 104 to 204, but it's out of my dividends as well. So either way. I'm sitting here pretty just because I bought on the dip. And that's one of the things I love about dividend growth investing. You can do this with almost anything. You can do this with your growth portfolio. And let's take a look here. And I'm 100% transparent. So I want to show you guys. I'm getting mauled in this portfolio. But at the same time, I'm owning companies that I believe will be the future. Tesla, Enphase. I'm not so sure about ARK, but in the long term, hopefully this will pay off. Etsy, Disney, I'm I'm down on these. I suck at timing the market. I've made tons of videos where I show myself literally buying this this portfolio on February 12th of 2021. Yeah, I got wrecked. But basically, at the end of the day, I'm buying into it. I'm getting more and more value into these companies. I'm building up my position eventually in five to ten years because hopefully by then we'll be good. But in five to ten years, man, I think that these positions, these buys I'm making right now will be beautiful and yeah, I definitely think that I'm, I'm setting the mood right now. This is one strategy that I love. No matter how low the stock goes, I'll pretty much always buy. And then hopefully in the long term, it will bounce back. So this is my favorite strategy. You guys can probably tell by all the, <laughs> the passion I was talking about. Let me know you down in the comments down below. Can't even talk right now. I'm so excited. I get so nerdy when it comes to dividend investing and dollar cost averaging. But anyways, let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think is your favorite strategy, which ones you guys are doing, and what other strategies out there that you guys are doing. I only talked about three. There's hundreds of other strategies that you can do to avoid market downturns. So let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you guys like this video. I'll keep these videos coming. My last video was on dividend growth investing and it seemed to do well. Let me know if you guys want to see more dividend growth investing videos or more general market videos. But anyways, that's been it. And guys, also, it would mean a lot to me if you guys like this video, subscribe. I'm on my way to 1,000. I'm really hoping to get there. I'm at 149 right now, so we're almost at 150. That milestone was nice. But anyways, before I lose my voice, that's it, guys. And remember, everyone eats.